So here is my Airbnb data set for Montreal. I've already cleaned and filtered it. So I am now focusing on the neighborhood of Villa Marie. If I double check here, I can see I only have Villa Marie. All my other data I've deleted out. Um, and so I only have data for this neighborhood. Now I've highlighted some of the variables that I can now analyze. And so the first thing I want to do is I want to do a pie chart on the property types in this neighborhood. So recall you learned how to do a pivot table. And so I'm actually just going to click anywhere and it's going to do a pivot table for the entire data set for instance. So I'll go ahead and go to insert and click on pivot table. And it's just going to select all my data and I'll go ahead and click uh, OK. And so I've got my pivot table on a new tab here. And uh, I already know I've only got one neighborhood, but to double check, when I click on neighborhood, I can see I only have Villa Marie. So that means I've cleaned everything out and deleted all the other neighborhoods I did not care about. And then what I'll do is I'll take my property type and go ahead and drop that into rows. So it breaks out the different property types in this neighborhood. And I want to take that property type and drag and drop it over into values because I want um, the pivot table to count it for me. So based on this, um, I need to copy and paste the relevant information. So it's my apartment, condo, house, and townhouse, and the count. So I'll right click and copy, and I'm just going to put it over here to the, to the right. Uh, because trying to create graphs in pivot tables is not very pretty, especially if you mess around with a pivot table. Um, so I like to copy and paste it uh, separately. So what I want to do now is I'm going to select my data and go to insert and I want to choose a pie chart. Uh, I'm using a pie chart because I'm displaying the whole of our neighborhood Villa Marie. And so I want to know the percentages of it. I'm actually going to make this bigger, make it more visible. And so you can see here, I don't have the data points. So uh, I want to add data labels by clicking on add data labels. So hopefully this feels familiar. We did this back in chapter two. And the numbers that appear are the ones from the table. Uh, that's not as helpful. Uh, I also want to include percentages. So if I right click on any of the labels, it's going to select all my labels. And then I want to format data labels. Anytime we're formatting, we're uh, changing the way something appears. And so I'll click on that and I want to add the percentage. Okay. And so now I've got the count uh, of each type and the percentage, which might be cumbersome to see. So perhaps I'm going to uncheck values so that all I see left is in percent. And I can change the position if I want it in the middle or uh, inside end, outside end, uh, or best fit. Like it'll play around with this, but you can also physically move. Um, the labels in the space as well. Uh, go ahead and close this. This is really small. So what I want to do is if I click on the labels again and I go to the home, I can uh, format the font size just like I would with uh, any document or chart. So I can change this to maybe size 20 and I can make this like bigger and stretch it out and I can move you know these percentages over for a little bit easier viewing. You can even format data series, and that'll let you rotate um, your pie chart. See, so I can I can kind of move it or angle it, and maybe it's easier if I leave it like this. And then I'll go ahead and you know play around with my formatting. I like the 93 inside. Um, maybe I'll I'll take these smaller percentages out a bit for better spacing because it doesn't fit very well inside the pie. And then I want to make sure to uh, name my chart. So this is um, property type in, or property types in Villa Murray. You can also change um, the font size for the legend. Same thing, but just by clicking on it and then going to the home tab and font, you can just make this bigger until it's something easier to see. So you want to play around with your charts so that they're visible with good font size, people can see it and read it and understand what it is that, that they're looking at. Let's go back to our Airbnb data. Now what I also want to do, why don't we analyze price? And so what I'm actually going to use is the data analysis tool pack. If you haven't done this already, um, there's a link in every week's module in the chapter resources that has um, instructions on how to turn on the data analysis tool pack. So mine's turned on already. So I'm going to go to data and I go to data analysis 
and we're going to use descriptive statistics because that's what our assignment is and I'll click OK. So for the input range, this is the data I want to analyze. So I'm going to click on column P, which is my price column. Um, my first uh, row here is a label, so I want to make sure to check labels in first row because otherwise Excel will uh, get annoyed when trying to calculate what price means. And then I'm going to click on Summary Statistics and click OK. And it's going to create my descriptive statistics chart. And since we're working with price, I can actually change this into dollars. So if I highlight um, my mean, standard error, median mode, standard deviation, and go to the home, there's a uh, number formatting right here. And I can turn this into dollars. It's a little bit easier to work with. My minimum and my maximum, that might be helpful to know. Uh, and my sum and my count. Um, so now I've got some descriptive statistics. So I can put this table into my part two business memo and use it to describe what the price looks like uh, in Villa Marie. So if we look at our Airbnb data, pretty much anywhere that has words, you can do a pivot table to count how many times it appears. So for instance, if I scroll to the right, the cancellation policy is a categorical or nominal uh, data point. And I can use a pivot table and count that and do a pie chart, for instance, um, for any of our uh, variables that are related to money. That's ratio data, meaning there's a true zero. So you can do descriptive statistics on these, for instance. And then you've got numeric values here for the number of guests that it can accommodate, the number of bathrooms, bedrooms, and beds, all values that you can run descriptive statistics on using the data analysis tool pack, anything that you think might be helpful to inform your business. One more descriptive statistic that some of you might be interested in uh, if you haven't cleaned your data or deleted it completely and you've got all the neighborhood data still available. So for instance here I've got Boston open, it's completely uncleaned. You'd already learned how to do pivot tables to organize some of this data, but I'm going to run through it again real quick. So if I go insert pivot table, and I'll go ahead and click OK, and then I take my neighborhood cleansed. I drop that down so you can see I've got all these neighborhoods right here. Then I take the price and I drop that into values. And so sum of price isn't useful. Recall I need to uh, double click on sum of price and a little menu opens and get the average price. Right, so I've got my average price and I'll go ahead and um, turn these into dollars. Now what I can do is if I, um, and I want to sort this let's say from high to low or low to high or you can keep it in alphabetical order your choice uh, but if I take this and I copy and paste it right next to it what I can do is now create a bar chart that compares the average price so I'll go ahead and select this go insert and in my charts here look for the bar chart option and now I have a bar chart with the average price per night. So I'm going to add data labels. That's not the prettiest. Um, I got to make it bigger, I think, is the best way to do that one. And so now I've got my prices here, and I can see the average price per night by neighborhood. Now, if this looks too difficult to see, what I can also recommend is well, maybe we only do a chart on the top. I don't know, 10 locations. So I can actually tweak this. If I drag the blue and purple lines up and say I only want to go up the you know, first 10 or first half. So if I only select the first half, now my bar chart is easier to see because it only focuses on the first dozen or so uh, locations. So you have to make these decisions of like how much information do you want to show? Do you want to show the prices for every single neighborhood or do you just want to show the prices for your top neighborhoods? Is it like the top 10, the top 15, or maybe it's a cutoff point, anything over $190, right? So you get to make all these decisions that you think is useful for a decision maker to see. So again, I'll, I'll name this, right? Um, average price per night for uh, top Boston neighborhoods. So this is combining what we learned in a previous video with pivot tables uh, to calculate some descriptive statistics and then when you copy paste it you're going to take what you learned from chapter 2 to make a chart.
So if you have any questions, just let me know.